the question here, what are we all seeking? Why are we all here? Why are you sitting in this chair? What do you want out of life? What do you think it is? I know you see the answer, but why are you here? Okay, somebody's like, pussy. I'm here for that pussy. No, you're here for happiness, okay? And uh, this is really, like, if you sit down and think about it, the shit that motivates you and me, motivates all of us to do every little thing that we do, okay? You may think you're here. I'm here to get women. You know, I want women. I want that pussy. Uh, no, okay? If you follow the trail of wise, it's always happiness, okay? You're like, you know what? I really want, like, a stunning girlfriend. Why? This is something you should all do. Like sit down and be like, why do I want this? Why do I want the girlfriend? Why do I want the money? Why do I want success? Why do I want to hustle? Why do I want to have a purpose? Why do I want friends? It's always to be happy. I want the fucking beautiful girlfriend so all my friends can see me with the beautiful girlfriend and uh, they'll finally approve of me and this means I can finally approve of myself. If a girl who's that beautiful and accepted by societal you know, standards is with me, this means I have value, this means I'm lovable and I can love myself. Um, if I sleep with 100 girls, it's the same thing. If 100 girls like me, what does that mean about me? I'm pretty damn fucking cool and there's no reason to hate myself and I can finally love myself and I can finally be happy. I want money to be happy, I want success to be happy, um, literally everything you do, I want good grades, I want to be good, I want a good job, I want a wife, I want to get married, I want kids, um, whatever it is, if you follow the trail of wise, it's always to be happy, okay? This is the ultimate goal, um, this is what drives us 24-7, like this is it, this is the only drive that we have, it's to be happy. Whatever it is, think about it now, whatever, even little small goals, whatever it is, it's to be happy. And you all know it. Unconsciously, when I found out about you know, success with women, it was the same thing. Like I was like, well, I can get women, but if you really ask me why, it was to get rid of that constant anxiety that I was experiencing, that feeling of being stifled, of not being able to put myself out there, of just feeling like shit 24 seven. You know? And it's funny, like we take that for granted. Like if you do a little checkup right now and just notice how you feel, like just objectively, most likely your body language right now, like the way you're sitting is a little fucking tense. And we just say, we're like, oh, I am, a, I am a little tense. Yet, that's now normal, you know? If you go inside your body, you're like, well, how do I feel? And not just from your subjective perspective, let's just say someone else other than you is transported in your body. Would they have an enjoyable experience right now? Are you relaxed? Like, am I relaxed? <laughs> am I relaxed? Would they feel good? Would it be a pleasant experience? Probably not, like I can guarantee you're not all 10 out of 10. Back in the day, I was probably a good three out of 10, 24 seven. Like that was my default, three out of 10 all the time. Uh, just always anxious, introverted, feeling like shit. And when I saw a game, I was like, shit, if I can master this on one hand, I can have control over this. Maybe I can change this state of anxiety. And if I can get all these girls and get my friends to see me with all these girls, I can finally be happy. I can finally be at ease. I can finally relax. I'll have reached the ultimate goal. That's the first thing I thought. I read the book, The Game, and I was like, shit, I wanna go out, I wanna go to a bar, I want a really hot girl, not, not, I didn't even want to like, be with a hot girl, I just wanted her to smile and laugh at something I said. And I wanted all my friends to see, and be like, holy shit, and I wanted them to ask me, like, what did you do, how, how did you do that? And I would tell them, just be cool, I was just cool, just chill, and they're like, fuck. And once I got that, I thought that was the key, I'll be happy. I'll be able to always have girls to love it like me and to the outside world, everyone will praise me and now I can be happy. That's what drives us, okay? And uh, again, we're just talking about like the context of girls here, but this is what drives everyone in the world. Um, we're obsessed with being happy to the point where if you look around you, the world's kind of going to shit. We're doing everything to find this. Like no matter what the consequences are, like we will not fucking rest until we find happiness. People are willing to use drugs and literally destroy their bodies, kill themselves in order to be happy. Okay, this is why we're all here. Okay, now by happiness, and this is important to understand, I'm not talking about the emotion of feeling happy. Because if you think about feeling happy, what is it really? It's this temporary escape or relief from pain. That's it, you know? Um, we've somehow bought into the fact that we think our default is unhappiness, pretty funny. Similar to success with women, what do we think our default is? Rejection. I will get rejected unless dot dot dot. Unless I show her that I'm cool. 
Why do you assume you'll get rejected? Why don't you assume you'll succeed by default? Here, what do we assume? I'm unhappy unless. And then we try to find ways to feel happy, and it's usually this escape from our default that is unhappiness, or so we think, and uh, we call that happiness. Every time we succeed in escaping, we call that happiness. If you go to a movie, like most common answer, like what makes you happy? Going to a movie, watching a cool TV show, uh, eating food, um, sex, masturbation, drugs, drinks, smoking. It's an escape. And you're like, that's when I'm happy. But it's not true happiness. Why? Because it's temporary and you don't fix the cause. The underlying problem is still there, the fact you assume that unhappiness is your default. Okay, and these are some obvious ones like smoking, drugs, so on and so forth, but it could also be simple things like drinking kombucha or drinking a green juice. I feel happy when I drink this really healthy um, juice. That's cool, but what happens when it ends? What happens when you finish the fucking drink? When happiness depends on something, it's always temporary. I'm only happy when I meditate. What happens when you don't meditate? You go back to being unhappy. I'm only happy when I have a purpose in life. I heard that. When I have a purpose, you're happy. When you have a passion, you're happy. What happens when you don't have a purpose? What happens when, you know, it's like, what, have, what if you don't have a purpose? You fall back into unhappiness. I'm only happy when I'm grateful. Gratitude is happiness. When I wake up, I make a list of everything I'm grateful for, and I'm happy. What happens when you're not making that list? You go back to unhappiness. I'm only happy when I'm forgiving. You know, when I forgive people, I'm happy. What if you're not forgiving? What happens when you're done forgiving? You go back to unhappiness. It's literally like we're putting our fucking hand like in the flames, like in the fire, and we're like, let's put a little water. I'm happy until you're back in the fucking flames. It's crazy. It's, that's what we call happiness. And it's not really happiness, because again, you know deep down inside that the underlying co like problem's still there, and you know it's temporary, so there's that worry. How long is it gonna last? How long is happiness gonna last? If you're happy now, you might have been looking forward to this event. You're like, fuck, when I'm at this event, I'm gonna be happy. When I'm in Vegas, I'm gonna be happy. What, what happens when you're done with Vegas? This entire time here, there's probably that little lingering fear of what happens when this ends? How long is this going to last? What about the next thing? And most of the time, you're probably worrying about the next thing. You're like, what do I do next? I don't want to fall back to my default. What do I do next? The same as when you're interacting with a girl. Oh, I said hi. What do I do next? Before I fall back to my default where she rejects me. That's what we think happiness is. What I'm talking about here, and this is the goal, it's a continuous state of feeling happy where there is no anxiety. It, it's basically your default is now happiness. There's no anxiety, there's no stress, there's no anger, there's no negative emotions. It's a continuous state where you're just always fucking good. Like that's your foundation. That's what we're seeking. And none of us are currently finding it. You know, you can ask yourself like, what's the longest right now in your entire life? You can go back through your entire life. What's the longest period of time you've been happy? Have you been happy a full day before? <laughs> Probably not. It's pretty crazy. Your entire fucking life, a whole day, even half a day, of just nonstop happiness, not a little fucking worry pop in. I doubt it. You know? And uh, yeah, I mean, th this is what we're seeking. It's like we want this state. And uh, what I'm talking about here, yeah, is not this fucking emotion. Okay, the emotion is temporary. It's uh, when it depends on something. Anytime feeling happy, Depends on something, and here's a list, you know, if something goes your way, like it, literally anything. If something goes your way, you're happy. If you get what you want, you're happy. If you achieve a certain goal, if you get into a relationship, you're happy. Let's say, if I get the girl, I'll be happy. If, uh, you know, say you're in a relationship, if you have a kid, you're happy. If you're older, you know, if you get married, you're happy. If you have grandkids, you're happy. That's like, till the day you die, you're seeking this happiness. You're like, well, it wasn't when I was married. Maybe when my, my kids get married. Maybe when, when I have grandkids, then I'll be happy. Um, when you're with good people, you're happy. We fear being alone, by the way. Again, this is another syndrome of you assuming that your default is unhappiness. Um, how much time do you spend just alone with yourself? You know? It's funny, like you have, uh, <laughs> I mean, I experienced this recently. I, I caught this thought, it was weird. Like, I was planning to do something one day and then it turned out I didn't have to do it. And I had like an hour free. Like an hour free, just out of the blue. And what did I immediately think? Fuck, what do I do to fill this hour? I have an hour free, how can I fill it with activity? You wake up, you're like, how can I fill 
today with activity. You're waiting for a friend, your friend's late. How soon till you reach for your fucking phone? When you get home after work, how, how soon till you jump on the computer? Just anything to avoid being with yourself. I experienced this too a couple years ago. I did, um, it's called this uh, sensory deprivation tank where you're, you're in this tank, they close it, it's pitch black, um, there's like a liquid, it's not water, but it's liquid where you float and it matches the temperature of your skin. So you're floating in there, you don't feel anything. So it cuts off again all the senses. You don't feel anything, you don't see anything, you don't hear anything. And uh, I went there with Owen and uh, we're like, you know what, we're doing two hours, two hour session. And uh, we're in the, the tank and at first it's fucking awesome. At first you're like, holy shit, like it sounds pretty cool. You know, I'm sure all of you would be like, hell yeah, like I wonder what it feels like to literally feel, hear, and see nothing. Like, you're, it's literally like you're floating, it's super weird. And you're like, ah, oh, this is fucking cool. Until a few minutes passed and you get bored of the novelty and then you're just stuck there with yourself. <laughs> and then it turns into two hours of hell. Absolute fucking hell. And uh, it kind of reminds you like shit, like, this is what's driving me to do everything I do. I can't just be still with myself. This is absolute hell. Like the most horrible thoughts kick in. You know? Even probably now, if you take a two minute bathroom break, you're gonna go to the bathroom and those thoughts are gonna start fucking kicking in. You're like, oh shit, pull out my phone while I take a piss. Literally. You know? Or you'll be thinking about this, like, oh, the seminar is pretty cool, it's gonna be cool. Fucking loser. Da -da -da. Like all the shit will pop in again. Just in two minutes. <laughs> you know? I say, like, how many of you have been like happy for like a day straight? How many of you have technically been happy for just 30 seconds straight? <laughs> Probably none. It's crazy, okay? And uh, again, I'm not perfect either. I'm not fucking happy all the time. I'm seeking it just like you. Um, but this is what we're all after, this continuous fucking state, okay? Um, here's some other ones too. If you fall in love, again, if you're happy, if you have a purpose, if you have you know, a certain passion, it's always depending on something. If uh, your life has meaning, if you're taking action, if you're hustling, that's a huge one. Like if you turn into uh, a workaholic, and that's one that's easy to kind of rationalize today too, because there's so much content out there like, hustle, work, fucking hustle. And you're like, yes, I must be hustling. And then you kind of associate hustling to be, you know, feeling happy. What happens if, you know, you don't hustle, then you feel horrible. And then you turn into a workaholic, you burn yourself into the fucking ground. Again, it's like whatever it takes, you will do, you will go all out even if it ruins your body to find this state, okay? If you wear a certain piece of clothing, if you make money, if you buy something new, if you read something, if you learn something, if you drink something, be it a healthy green juice, be it booze, if you eat something, be it something healthy like a fucking salad or even a fucking burger, if you meditate, if you're successful, if you're famous, if you're progressing, if you're grateful, if you're forgiving, if you're kind, if you're um, giving, even just giving, it's like, you must be giving. Only when I'm giving am I happy. Only when I'm offering value am I happy. It's depending on something, okay? And this here enslaves you to one, that particular circumstance, whatever it's depending on. So you're not technically free, so it isn't this true state of happiness. Like you're enslaved to having a purpose. You're enslaved to being in a state of feeling grateful. And uh, you know, another one too is like due to, this is an interesting one, uh, the dual nature of this world, anything, if you're, it's depending on anything, that thing is not permanent and it's going to change and it's going to disappoint you and you will not be happy. So it's all temporary, it's all this relief from pain and as long as you don't get to the cause, nothing will happen. You'll just be reinforcing that assumption. Because that's a big one too. It's like the more you think hustling will make you happy, the more you think self-improvement will make you happy, the more you're reinforcing that your default's unhappiness. The fact that you need to do something to be happy is reinforcing the assumption that you're not enough to be happy right now. You don't deserve it. It's not your default. And as long as it's not your default, you are fucked. No matter what you do, you are fucked. You can get a bigger purpose. You can get more things. You can get more girls. You can get more validation. You are fucked. And it's kind of a mind fuck to think about. You're like, shit. As long as you're operating in this paradigm, you're done. So it's getting back to that assumption, getting back to that false assumption that's wrong where your default is unhappiness. Why not assume the opposite? Who says your default is unhappiness? Why isn't your default happiness? Okay, and uh, this here, funny enough, is why we're seeking this state. It's because it is our default. That's the only reason we're seeking it, okay? Why? Because it's our fucking basic nature. 
We're all born whole, born happy, and somewhere along the way, we assume the opposite, and we live our lives based on this false assumption, and until we re-examine it, until we snap out of this paradigm, we are fucked. For real, you know? And, um, you know, we've been doing it for so long, like assuming it for so long that we've convinced ourselves, like, it's our default. Like, it's hard to imagine that it's not. Because that assumption happens, I, I don't fucking know when, like early on, maybe in childhood or something, you're like, shit, I'm not, you know, good enough. And then uh, you kind of like hang on to that, you shove it in your subconscious, which we'll get to, and you live your entire life based on this assumption. And the longer you spend living based on this assumption, the stronger it becomes. If everything you do grows from this assumption, it's reinforcing it, and that's it, you're done. You're so lost down the maze that you're stuck in this paradigm. And uh, that was, I mean, for me, the, the biggest thing I learned going through that media scandal, and I'll get to it, but um, I mean, I went all out in this paradigm. You know, I went all out in terms of uh, getting you know, success, validation, girls, money. Um, I, I was like, I'll do whatever the fuck it takes to be happy. And uh, that's what was fucking interesting is, if you view it from my perspective, it's like, at the time, like I went all out, and at the time where I was at, I did get everything that I fucking wanted. You know, it's that whole thing, like, it didn't work. Like, I got everything, like, from, for, for a dude in his fucking 20s, I was, like, living better than a, like, I had the lifestyle better than anyone you could fucking dream of. Because what do you think? You're like, okay, well, I'm gonna get into this, and you find out about the game, you're like, I'm gonna get the girls. And you go all out, and guess what? I got the girls. And uh, it started simple. Like, at first, as I told you guys, I'm like, if I just get one girl to smile at me in front of my friends, I'll be happy. And it happened. It, it happened, and I had that fucking dirty little high, and I was happy for like, you know, a couple minutes. Or, no, technically a little bit longer. I went home that night, and I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> but then, it, you know, I went back to that default. Like, nothing had changed. That underlying false assumption was still there. Like, you're a piece of shit. Your default is unhappiness. And immediately, I'm like, fuck, I, I need another hit. You know, it's, it becomes compulsive. You're like, I need another hit. So I went out, and I got another girl to smile at me in front of my friends. Got the little high. Went home, and I kept doing it until kind of got numb to it. And then I'm like, shit, I need, uh, I need more. I need uh, a phone number. Got a phone number. Ecstatic. Like, if you're new, you're just hoping, if I could just get one fucking phone number, happiest day of your life. <laughs> now, do you give a fuck about a phone number? <laughs> oh. But at the time, I was happy. It's like, I got the number. Got numb to that. I need a uh, makeout. I got a girl to make out with me. Okay, numb to that. Um, I need to sleep with a girl. Slept with a girl. Numb to that. I need to sleep with a hotter girl. Got the hotter girl. Numb to that. Okay, a hotter girl. Got the hotter. Literally, like, all the way up to your 10. Got that. Numb to that. I'm like, shit, like, how much is it going to take to be happy? Um, I need more of them. Like, once you reach that point where you get the 10, you can't go up more. You're like, well, I'm literally sleeping with the hottest girl. I guess I need more. I need to sleep with 100 of these, 200 of these. <laughs> and you go all out and you do that. And you're still not happy. So you're like, fuck. I need more approval, I guess. You know, so I had my friend's approval, my wing's approval. And uh, then I was put in a situation where I'm like traveling the world teaching this. So not only am I getting the validation from all the girls I'm sleeping with, not only am I sleeping with tons of fucking girls, I'm getting tons of dudes cheering me on for sleeping with all these fucking girls. <laughs> like, imagine the high, like how fucking awesome that feels. Like, you're literally around the world, you go in front of these crowds, and everyone's like, fuck yeah, you fucked her, yeah. It's like, it's a dream. Like, when you sleep with that hot girl, you're like, shit, I wish all my friends knew. The entire world knows. Like, my life is going to crowds cheering me on for doing that. <laughs> it's crazy. So, you think you're the shit. You're getting all these girls that are reinforcing you're the shit. The entire world's telling you you're the fucking shit. You're getting paid for it. You're traveling. It's like, literally, there is no better situation I could possibly think of. Like, 10 out of fucking 10, Yet, was I happy? No. We're just so fucking stubborn. That's the thing. It's like, what I kind of realized, like, first of all, like, chasing more, and like, what I knew deep down inside, what we all fucking know, is like, we know that we're not going to find happiness based on all those things. Like, right now, if I gave you literally everything in the world, like, let's just say, you had everything of the world, you were the god of the world, would you be happy? If the answer is no, why do you keep fucking seeking it? <laughs> and all these things, and all these validation, and all these people, and all these objects, and all these green juices, and drinks, and all this knowledge, and all these relationships. If you literally had everything in the world, you'd still not be happy. It's 
pretty crazy. Because again, it's still within that paradigm. What you're seeking is in another paradigm. A good quote to kind of uh, hammer this home is, we're trying to seek the infinite with the finite. We're in this world of like limited things and we're seeking the unlimited. It doesn't matter how much limited things you get, you're never gonna get the unlimited. You know, I forgot where I heard this. It's like trying to count till infinity. Can you count till infinity? Yes or no? No, there'll always be another fucking number. It doesn't matter how, many, like how high you get, you're never gonna reach infinity. And that's what we're all seeking. It's like we're seeking like infinity, we're seeking that state of happiness in the finite. And it doesn't matter how much we get, it's like more, 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 we're done. You know, and until we find this too, as I said, everything will be compulsive. And that's what's kind of crazy. It's like, um, you know, you, you need more, 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 more. You're literally like a fucking drug addict chasing more. You're a workaholic, you chase more game, you chase hotter girls. It's like you live a life of just being compulsive. You can't actually kind of relax because your foundation is, I'm unhappy. Okay, and um, this is also the reason, by the way, we can't find it. It's like, well, one, we're too stubborn, okay? Um, and you can't find something out there that is in here. It's like, if you're trying to seek what you already have, you're never gonna fucking find it. You know, it's like, our default is happy. We tell ourselves we're not happy, and we try to seek it out there. But no matter what you seek, as I said, it's in the paradigm of I'm not happy, it's reinforcing I'm not happy. What you're looking for comes before that. Okay, and uh, this here doesn't affect the fact that you can go out and get all these cool things. Like it doesn't affect, for example, passion, purpose, success, et cetera. Like that whole list I said before, being grateful, being giving, uh, you know, being successful, making money, getting girls, getting in a relationship, having your fucking grandkids. Totally fine to go do that, but it shouldn't be coming from that compulsive place. It's not about the thing, it's about the place it's coming from. Are you doing it to see completion? Are you doing it to be happy? Are you doing it to fill that void? Are you doing it to escape yourself? Or are you doing it coming from a place of abundance where it's no longer compulsive? That's the key. It's not the thing, it's the place it's coming from. And that's like a big misconception too, where like, fuck man, like, if that means like being happy, I must give everything up. Like you'll see a lot of stuff like, you must be a minimalist. Go in the woods, live in a little cabin. That's the only way. You must snap out of society. Fuck that, no. You can still live in society, you can make all the money you fucking want. You can be as successful as you want, but it's not compulsive and it's different motives behind it. And uh, this for me was a big one that's hard to grasp, is the difference between motiv being motivated by scarcity and being motivated by abundance. Where right now, it's like the way we're conditioned, it's like we're always motivated by scarcity. It's like the carrot and stick. You're running away from yourself and you're running towards something better. If there was, you know, if you didn't have to run away from yourself and if there was nothing better to get, you assume that you would do nothing. No, that's a big one too, even success with women. It's like, reach that point where you feel so good, you don't even need the girl. And what do we all think? Well, if I didn't need the girl, why the fuck would I go for the girl? If I was already fucking happy, if I had everything, why would I do anything? If there's no scarcity, if there's nothing to run away from, nothing to run towards, why would I do anything? But that's not true. That's the same as assuming, you know, it's like say you work for, work, uh, you work for money, you're like, well, if I had all the money, I wouldn't work. Is that true? No. If I gave you all the money in the world, you may think, you know, it's like, oh, I'm not just gonna, I'm not gonna work. But after a couple days, you'll be bored as fuck. And you will be inspired to work, but it'll be coming from a very different place. You can be motivated by abundance. You can be motivated by feeling happy, by feeling complete. You don't need the scarcity. And this is something that we hang on to. This is something that I fucking hung on to for Ever. It's like if I drop this, if I drop this false assumption that unhappiness is my default, I will not do shit with my life, I will not have this hustle, and uh, I'll be fucked. You know? We think that, you know, misery is the only motivator. Fear, pain is the only motivator. No. You know, it's like usually the first motivator, this is a good quote, again, forgot why I heard this one too, it's misery is the first teacher, don't let it be the last. Misery is what gets you here. You're in pain, you want something better, you want girls, you wanna work on yourself because you're coming from a place of fucking misery. It's a good first teacher, it gets you in here, but it's not good in the long term. Move past that and be motivated by completeness or instead of fear, by love, <laughs> okay? Um, so understand there's different types of motivation. Understand the journey, and this is the big one. The journey isn't to get somewhere, the journey is to realize you're already there. Huge, 
And this applies again to happiness, but also to gain. The whole like, you are enough. You don't need the girl to be complete. This is not about bettering yourself, it's about realizing you're already up here. Okay, back in the day, it's like, we're down here, the girl's up here, game was, how can I bring her down to my level? That's the old school game, if you look it up, like, how do I neg her to bring her down? Then, we kind of evolved, we're like, you know what, fuck trying to bring her down, let's bring ourselves up. Let's work on ourselves, let's work on self-improvement. I'm down here, the girl's up here, how can I get up here? But no matter what you do to get up here, what's the assumption, once again, that you're down here by default? When does it end? Never. Compulsive. I must always be improving, I must always be improving. No, the key is realizing everyone's fucking up here, but you're telling yourself you're down here and getting rid of whatever's in the way to realize that you're already up here, which is a lot easier fucking said than done, okay? And uh, funny enough, that's what I realized through the scandal is I was chasing all the shit and uh, of course it became compulsive. I was like more, 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 more uh, to the point where it just got fucking obnoxious. Like it takes over, it's like, it's insane. And I'd be pushing like different, you know, videos to get like reactions, different comments, all this validation until it popped. And this is what was interesting. It's like it popped, and I went from having everything to literally nothing, with like, like that, you know? And um, that was probably like, I mean, by far the hardest thing I ever went through. Uh, it, it feels like death, you know? It's like you go from everything to like, you live off that reputation, like everyone's cheering me on. Whole world, fuck you. And uh, if you're hooked on the validation so strongly, if it affects you so strongly, you'll be just as hooked on the negative fucking comments too. And uh, that shit fucks with you. Like reading like comment after comment after comment after comment. You're like, the entire world thinks this. <laughs> and then you start doubting yourself too because there's just so much fucking blast to that. You're like, oh my God. Comment after comment, that's all you see. Comment from people you know. You're like, oh my God, that's all you see. Death threats. Lawyers telling you, don't use your credit cards or they'll track you and kill you. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like literally, I had to use fucking cash for a period of time. Like, it's like, do not use your credit card. They will kill you. Non-stop death threats, anthrax or, or fake anthrax sent to you. It's like crazy, all this shit. So I'm like, whoa, like within, like, like that. So you lose that, you lose the reputation, uh, you lose, again, like different relationships, different friendships. Um, I had different friends like telling me like, oh, you know, you're fucking awesome too. Oh yeah, that guy, da 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 da. I had shit from, you know, kids I went to school with saying shit like, you never know, like, the boy sitting next to you in class turns out to be a monster, <laughs> like shit like that. You're like, God. That's just happening. Um, you know, they go after friends, family. It's like fucking nightmare. And uh, it reached that point where it's like just so intolerable. And this is what was interesting that the only way to kind of get past it was just kind of let go. Now, it's a temporary let go. Then, you know, you hang on to like old habits, but it was a temporary let go in Miami. And I remember it was like so fucking tall. But I was like, oh, like that was the lowest point of my life that I just let go. And, uh, that's when we assume like it's so scary because you think if you let go, you'll drop to that pit of unhappiness, like the lowest, again, your default's unhappiness. But when I let go, I realized like it wasn't unhappiness, it was happiness. And that's why I was like, holy shit. You know, it's like we're literally all hanging onto the, the side of a cliff and you know, someone's below is like, let go, I'll catch you. You're like, no, if I let go, I'll die. And then you actually do let go, but it requires so much to just let go. Because again, you've been hanging on your entire fucking life. Everything you've been doing has been reinforcing it. Assumption upon assumption upon assumption. Belief, belief. It's like, hang on or I will die. And you think that the journey is just to keep hanging on. It's like, let go. Easier said than done. It's easy to do, I mean, but hard to do. And uh, that's what it took for me to like, actually let go. And the lesson was, like, it was that little glimpse of like, holy shit. Instead of like, nothingness, instead of unhappiness, it was happiness. And that's like, the default is happiness. That's what like, poof, like baffled me. Now, a question I get a lot when I, when I tell this is, um, well, are you happy all the time now? You know, have you achieved this goal? And it's like, no. And we'll get to this too where you'll have that temporary glimpse of like happiness, like I let go and I was like, holy fuck. And then all the subconscious shit pops in again. All the thoughts that are just habits that are built on this false slash wrong assumption take over and uh, you're back to the grind, but at least you had the glimpse. And uh, that was the main value that I got out of it is like, I knew the journey now. So I wasn't lost in that illusion. It's like, this is the journey. And now when you know what to go for, it's a lot easier to fucking get there versus staying lost, you know, in those, like seeking it where it's not. And um, the other question I get is, do you need to go through something similar to experience this? And obviously the answer is no. Okay, it's like, it, it really comes down to like, how fucking stubborn are you and how realistic are you? I was extremely fucking stubborn, just chasing more and more and more. It's like, 
How much more until you fucking realize it's not out there? Like right now, you're probably hanging on to, there's probably a lot of things in your life if you took a step back where you thought if you got that, you'd be happy and yet you have it and you're not happy. So it's like, when the fuck are you gonna realize this? And uh, another one is like, well, do you have to go through it and lose it? It's like, no, because most people, funny enough, who lose it, still don't let go. And what happens, dead, literally. That's like most people, like, done. If you look up, like, most media scandals, like, 50% plus, 70% plus commit suicide. Why? Because they lose it all, and, like, they're so attached to it that they let it drag them all the way down. So, again, letting go is easy, but extremely fucking hard to do, okay? And um, this is what kind of got me just obsessed with this. I'm like, holy shit, like, how can I re-experience this? Like, if this is the journey, how do I fucking get there? You know, how can I make it a habit or a practice of like continuously letting go? And it's not some magical thing, and you know, we can do it after this, but it's not magical. It's just like something we're not used to fucking doing, and it's something that we resist because of all these fucking beliefs, all these thoughts, okay? So, so far, what I really want you to get out of this, by the way, is we make that false assumption that our default is unhappy. Wrong, okay? That false assumption is the cause of every bad thing in your life, <laughs> literally. By you assuming you're down here, you now feel incomplete, you now feel like shit, and you're always chasing more, now there's anxiety, now you develop a certain ego, now there's different wants, different desires, different needs, um, and you know everything becomes compulsive. It all comes from that. It's about getting rid of all that that's built on it and removing that assumption and getting out of that fucking paradigm. That's how you get there, okay? It's not about adding more and that too, it's like, how much more can you truly add? Um, if you look back, funny enough too, when you were a kid, you were probably happier than you are now. So what you're doing, the, the, the path you're going on is not working. It's not more, 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 it's less, less, less. Okay, and as I said too, it's not black and white. It's not less where you need to become like a fucking minimalist and move to the woods. It's get rid of the drive, get rid of the, the place it's coming from, the fact that you think you need it to be happy, to be complete. So. I started obsessing with this and uh, just doing a fuck ton of, uh, of uh, research, like literally like looking up every fucking thing I could, uh, different practices, and again, my whole goal was how to let go of all this shit. You know, it's letting go of literally everything, like everything you're attached to, letting go of all of your emotions, and that's big. Remember, your emotions are not you, okay? Happiness, feeling happy is the emotion, we're looking for the state letting go of all your thoughts, literally dropping everything, okay? And uh, this is tough, because even meditation, most meditation is just you trying to escape. It's uh, the difference between, you know, concentration meditation, where for example, you focus on your breath, or you focus on the present moment, where you narrow your focus on one little thing so you can forget about all the rest. If you focus on the now, you don't focus on all your problems and you feel temporarily better until your focus widens again and now you remember, fuck, all my shit's still there and you still feel like shit, okay? So that's a lot of meditation. So again, it's like these temporary escapes. The place meditation's coming from. Is it trying to escape or not? And most of the time, it's just an escape. We're like, fuck yeah, I feel good for 20 minutes. Then you're back to, you know, shit. Because it's depending on you meditating. So there's concentration meditation, then there's mindful or mindfulness meditation where it's more encompassing and it's more focusing on those assumptions and going into them. Um, so that was big. Okay, so I'm like, okay, so I need to go into it. And uh, another big one is understanding the conscious and subconscious mind. And uh, that's huge. Consciously, it's not as hard to let go of all your problems. It's not as hard to let go of that wrong assumption because you're conscious of it. The hard part is this assumption is buried deep down in your subconscious. That's why it's so fucking hard. Because consciously, it all makes sense, no? Yes, no? It makes sense, you're like, oh, fuck yeah, I get it, yeah, wrong, wrong assumption. Let me, let's assume that we're happy. Let's assume that our default's happiness. No, Is it, isn't that what I'm saying? Like, hey, just assume the opposite and you're good. Consciously, you're like, fuck yeah. But do you really assume it? No, because there's a whole fucking part of you, your entire subconscious, that's assuming the opposite. And that's been assuming the opposite since, for, for your entire fucking life. And it's just been building and building and building the energy behind it is stronger and stronger and stronger, and uh, you just can't let go of that. And uh, that's the biggest obstacle, by the way. It's like diving into your fucking subconscious, finding 
all the origins and everything that's built and growing from this wrong assumption and then letting go of that. If you could right now just make everything that's been suppressed, repressed in your subconscious conscious, you'd be fucking happy. Nonstop, you would reach that state. Yet, it's in your fucking subconscious. And that's the tough part. It's sitting down and diving into it. And this is the shit that's fucking terrifying. This is the shit that's the scariest thing you'll do in your entire fucking life. It's sitting down and diving into it. Okay, so think of it this way. Conscious mind is everything you're conscious of right now. Very straightforward. Everything you're aware of right now. Subconscious is what you're not aware of. That's it. You're aware, random numbers, let's just say 10% you're aware of, 90% you're not. If I ask you right now, what did you eat yesterday? That was something that was in your subconscious. You weren't aware of it, but now you are. Right? Yeah. So that's the way our mind works. And what happens is uh, what, you know, we can bury stuff like, what did we eat yesterday? We shoved that in our subconscious. But most of the time, what do we shove in there? Shit we don't like. <laughs> Shit that's like, you know, unpleasant. Shit you don't want to be aware of, you know? Um, things like bad memories. Do you want to be aware of different bad memories? Do you want to be aware of every fucking rejection you experienced? No. <laughs> Stuff it in your subconscious. Do you want to be aware of different, like, different emotions? Like shit like, we feel guilty by the way, different emotions. You're angry, you feel guilty, you shove that in your subconscious. Different emotional traumas as you're growing up, shove that in your subconscious. We're just shoving all this shit into our, it's like the trash bin of our fucking mind. It's so like, just throw it in the trash, never focus on, like, never be aware of it again. But just because we shoved it there, just because we're not focusing on it, doesn't mean it goes anywhere. For example, again, what did you eat yesterday? It didn't go anywhere. It's still there, you're just not aware of it. So all this shit we shoved down, we think it's gone, we're like, oh, if we just don't look at it, it's gone. It's still fucking there, okay? Um, some signs to be aware of, by the way, just in terms of seeing where your subconscious kicks in, um, any, like, extremely like, re like strong reactions, or like emotional reactions. You know, Eckhart Tolle calls this uh, pain body attack. For example, something happens and you get extremely mad, more than you logically slash consciously think you should be mad about, right? That's when shit that you've been stuffed down kind of pops out, it kind of takes over. But it's not just anger, because we think, oh, pain body, it's anything that's painful. What's another one? Anxiety. Approach anxiety. Logically, we know it doesn't fucking make sense to be that scared. Something takes over. Fear of rejection. That's not, is that like a logical, like from a conscious perspective, like, does it make sense to be that fucking scared? No, that is a pain body attack. That fear of rejection that's not rational, that approach anxiety that's not rational, that time you get angry when it doesn't make sense, you're just like, ah, oh, fuck, like that. That's not rational, that shit that's in your I think somebody died, uh, that's buried in your subconscious, okay? All this shit's active whether you like it or not, okay? And the biggest thing we repressed is not just those little upsets, it's that assumption, again, that unhappiness is our default. That's the first thing we fucking repress, and everything's built on that. So it's important to bring all that shit to your conscious mind, and that's why I'm saying it's scary as fuck. And that's like the process, it's like sitting down and being like, what have I stored down there? Like literally diving deep, and to like the scare, like that's what I'm saying, it's the scariest shit ever. It's like the stuff that you've put down there and you've put it down for so fucking long that again, it's been on repeat that entire time. So it's again, the energy behind it's a lot fucking stronger and you're a lot more scared of it and there's a lot more resistance around it. It's like if you've been putting something off for so long, like something very simple, like, I don't know, man, like, like let's just say as a kid, you've not cleaned your room. It's not that hard to do to clean your fucking room. But if you don't do it for so long, there's just so much resistance to it, it's gonna be a lot harder to actually do it because you've just been putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. We do that with shit we store in our subconscious mind. It's like put it off, 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 put it off. That's what we do. So there's a ton of resistance jumping into this. And it's the shit where you literally think you're gonna die by bringing it up. Like your ego is gonna just hang on to it. It's like, fuck no, dude. Like we've kept that down for so long. This is like your worst nightmare, okay? This is going back to every trauma you fucking experience like as a kid. The shit you're the most ashamed of about yourself. The th shit that you hate the most about yourself. The shit that you've tried to like run away from your entire life. All those thoughts where again, you're alone with yourself, those thoughts kick in and you feel like, like, like hell. It's diving into that. And uh, 
that's the process you have to go through. Again, it's not running away from it. It's like stopping, facing it, and like bringing that shit up and experiencing it. And that's why it's like so fucking hard. And that's why we're so stubborn. It's like we just don't want to. We just fucking keep putting it off no matter what it takes, thinking that maybe someday it'll just magically click and we'll all just be happy. No. Okay, you can't run away from the pain. You got to run through it. So huge change in approach here. It's not running away from it. It's running through it. Okay. You all have a certain trauma. Most of the time, it's like you probably won't even know right now what that trauma is until you start bringing awareness to it. And until before letting go of whatever stuff down there, you let go of the resistance around it. Okay, so it's changing the habit from something kicks in. Okay, again, here, like some ways to tell, you know, where to focus on. Focus next time you have that little pain body attack. Next time something's triggered. Maybe someone says something that upsets you more than it should. Instead of, what do we all do? As I said before, we try to escape it. Instead of running away from it, go into that. Don't go, like, again, you break up with your girlfriend. There's another one. Like all this trauma kicks in. Don't go for the fucking drink. Don't go for the drugs. Don't go for the party. Don't go for the movie. Don't go for the video game. Don't go for the food. Don't try to escape it. Go into that shit. That's the way there. And uh, again, you're probably going to experience resistance. So you'll probably have to go into the resistance first. Um, you're probably going to be scared shitless too because you think if you let a little bit of it out, everything will fucking come out. And that is true. Everything will come out. <laughs> like, you'll, you'll be in fucking tears, it'll just be absolute hell, um, that will happen, but that's the only way to actually process it, because you're just hanging on to it, and until you let go of that shit, it's always going to block you um, from, again, finding that default that is happiness, okay, so bring awareness to it, don't run away from it, let it come up, and again, this is hard because our conditioning too, society keeps telling you, run away from pain, run away from pain, go towards pleasure, here it's go towards the pain, let it come up, um, embody it fully, let go of the resistance around it, and then, of course, let it fucking like go through, like actually experience it. Because the reason you're hanging on to it is there's different judgments around it, you think it's bad, actually process that shit. Experience it. And until you do, this is the other interesting part, your subconscious will keep creating weird scenarios in your life for you to experience it. That's another way to kind of see what's buried down there. It's one, anything that's emotionally triggered, where it's, again, overreaction. Two, what are the patterns in your life? Most common one, what do you think it is? Your fucking parents. You probably recreated the same fucking relationships you had with your parents in your life right now. Maybe it's your boss. Maybe your boss is your dad. Maybe your boss is your mom. Crazy. Maybe your girlfriend is your mom. Maybe your girlfriend has more of your dad characteristics. Wherever there's shit that's repressed, you're somehow recreating that scenario. You know, one that um, I personally had uh, suppressed, and uh, this is the one thing the media scandal, for example, like shoved in my face, is I was unconsciously identified, like we all have a certain self-concept, like an identity we take on. And unconsciously, my self-concept was the bad guy. Happened as a kid, who knows the fuck when, most likely even watching movies, I was like the fucking bad guy in the movie. That was the cool guy. Of course, again, I didn't want to do anything bad, but I loved the fact that the bad guy would rise up and at the end, like, go out in glory, like flying too close to the sun and then just fucking shit would pop, hit the fan, drama. That's literally the concept I bought into. So whenever things were going a little too well, like, on one hand, it motivated me to seek success because you can't go out in glory without success. But whenever things went a little too well, I'd just pop it. Why? Just for the sake of it. Because shit was getting too well. So my subconscious is like, hell no, bang because it went against that self-concept I was buying into. And at first it's like a small scale, like different little things, like a simple one's like a fucking card game. Like every time I'd start winning at it, like as a kid, like maybe playing cards, I'd like bet all out, you know? Or if you're gambling in Vegas, you gamble a little bit, it's going well. Instead of being smart, what do you do? Fuck it, go out in glory, Blah, like everything, you know? Small scale like that. Uh, then it started going a little bit bigger. Different relationship, or, or just game. It's like, go ahead, game, and then it's like, Fuck it. It's, like, it's that fuck it mentality. Uh, different relationships, and then obviously the fucking media scandal. Everything was going well, and then subconsciousness, it's going a little too well, let's keep pushing it. Pops. And it basically gets bigger and bigger and bigger until you're forced to kind of confront it. 
So right now, whatever's like a recurring theme, like a big one's like fucking relationships, by the way. It's like if you, like, especially for a girl, it's like, I keep dating an asshole. It's like, yeah, more and more and more until you're forced to deal with whatever's fucking suppressed your subconscious. This is why it's so hard to, another one's like losing weight. Like another part of that self-concept was the bad guy, but also the um, kind of like dramatic, like destructive artist. So it went against me, for example, losing weight, getting in shape. Consciously, I wanted to. Consciously, I'm like, fuck yeah, let's get ripped. Yet, subconsciously, it was different. And your subconscious, because it's been building for so long, it'll be stronger than any fucking conscious thought you have. So right now, you can consciously think, I'm the shit, go out and talk to girls. If subconsciously you don't believe that, you're done. <laughs> it'll be like a little New Year's resolution. Two weeks, something will pull you back. Oh, I'm gonna get fucking ripped. Two weeks, something pulls you back. I'm gonna build success. Fucking uh, goes against the self-destructive, pulls you back. It's crazy, it's like, Consciously, think about this. Consciously, we would never do anything that is self-destructive. Why the fuck would you consciously choose to do anything that's self-destructive? You wouldn't. It's all subconscious. That's what runs you. That's why you're here. You know, we think like, how did I end up here? You got exactly what the fuck you wanted, subconsciously. You have shitty relationships, consciously you may think, I want a healthy relationship. Subconsciously, say maybe as a kid, you associate like, you know, love with abandonment, what's gonna happen? I want her to stay. 90% your subconscious, abandonment equals love. You're gonna self-sabotage. I'm enough, I'm sex worthy for girls. You don't deserve any girl, you're pathetic. Reinforce over all these years, buried down, all these experiences, shoved down, reinforcing your pathetic. You think that little belief, I'm awesome, is going to help? Little sprint, back down. And going through that kind of made me realize this, brought my attention to it. And literally since then, I've just been focusing on like, what's buried down there? Like actually sitting down and just jumping deep into my fucking subconscious and bringing that shit up, processing it. And uh, since then, it's like, gone extremely fucking in shape. And it's like, you finally get that lasting shit that you're after. Now, obviously, as I said before, am I happy all the time? Fuck no. Do I still have pain body sacks? Fuck yeah, a ton. But less than before. And I think this is a good way too to kind of reconcile self-acceptance and self-actualization. It's by knowing deep down inside that we're already up here, the journey is getting rid of everything that's in the way from you realizing you're up here. So. There is a journey, and who knows how fucking long it takes. It may just take forever. It's kind of like the same thing as going from up here to down here. It's like, it never ends. But although it may never end, you still know, especially once you experience it, that you're already up here. So although you're working on getting rid of the shit, it's not coming from scarcity. So it is possible to improve yourself without improving yourself. It's possible to improve yourself coming from a place of already being improved. Um, by the way, any, any questions so far? Yeah. Loud to the group. Tiger Max once said in a podcast with Dan Delta to share that the best investment he ever made in himself was a psychologist to help him talk through all the fucked up shit that he had suffered and caused him to write the books he wrote. So is this deep personal work you talk about, is this something you feel you can do yourself? Or do you think you need somebody else's help? And have you used anybody else's help to get through? Oh, I use, yeah, we'll dive into this here. I used, I mean, I went all out in terms of looking up all these different teachings. Uh, I worked with, you know, like an energy coach. I did, I did everything, but we make it way more complicated than it is. It's like, th that's, by the way, can be the trap too if you go to a psychologist. It's like, remember, you have to let go of e your emotions and your fucking thoughts because all your thoughts are built on that assumption. Um, so talking about it, is cool and it'll be a lot better than just not even bringing your attention to it. But talking about it isn't necessarily processing it and letting go of it. You'll know a lot about it, but the shit will still be there. You know, most of us is like, we'll logically know about all our fucking problems. Like logically you could tell me, you know, hey man, like you're, you're buying into this self concept. And I've actually logically known that for a while before the media thing hit. It's like, I knew that was the concept but I didn't do anything about it. That's the way, by the way, your mind will fuck you. It's the way we're conditioned is always to accumulate more information. You're in school, learn more, learn more, learn more. You get into game, learn more. You watch all the fucking videos. It's like, that's the way your mind works. It's like more, 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 more. Probably right now, 
If you are inspired, what's the first thing you're thinking? Shit, man, I can't wait to hear about all the resources. If Julian could tell me a bunch of books on this, it'd be fucking sick. I'll just dive in and learn more. But what is that doing? It's just like, that's more shit to get in the way. That's like your mind staying active. It's not about learning more. It's not like you're gonna reach this point. Like, learning more is the same as seeking validation. It's the same as seeking money, except now it's knowledge. If I, once I reach this point where I learned enough, I'll be happy. I'll finally let go. Remember, it's not about adding, it's about removing. Especially removing the mind. And that's what's interesting, is like you can't process this with the mind. Because as soon as your mind is active processing it, it's immediately judging it and labeling it. And just by the fact that your mind labels it as something, you're hanging on to it. Okay? Um, so, although it is really good, like I'd highly recommend like reading as much as you fucking can on this, don't think that you need to reach that point. It's like anything you read or hear, everything I'm talking about here is to point you in that direction of actually experiencing it. Not intellectually understanding it, but like knowing it, you know? Um, so it points you in the right direction. Don't think that you need to, you know, understand all the details about it. Don't make it more complicated than it is. That's a trap you'll fall into. It's extremely simple. Um, it's not fucking magic. It's just something we're not used to doing. And uh, that's what I realized, okay? so. Again, what worked for me is a combination of like many fucking teachings, all the way from David Hawkins, Eckhart Tolle, uh, the energy coach I worked with, different articles, different videos I watched. It's just like this, you know, there's like some pranic breathing technique in it. There's like a bunch of different shit that I just kind of pieced together. Um, use whatever works for you. Again, the process is basically this. It's three steps. One, be aware of what it is you want to let go of. That's step one. And uh, this could be something conscious. Again, it's like say, attachment to something. Say fear of rejection or something unconscious where you dive into your subconscious and you bring it up. As I said, you let go of the resist. It could be the resistance around diving into it, but you need to be aware of what it is or you bring up whatever you've been fucking suppressing, but you need to be aware of what it is. Okay. And that's why again, subconscious is tough. It's like, you don't see it. You're not aware of it. So be aware of it. Number two, allow yourself to experience it fully. And then number three, let it run its course and let it go. Like that's the other thing that was big for me is realizing that all this shit we're hanging on to wants to go. We just keep hanging on. And again, hanging on, any little bit of judgment, you're still hanging on. Any thought about it, like, oh, there's this traumatic experience, that was bad. That was bad, hanging on to it. So that's the process, those three steps, okay? And um, step one, I mean, step one's like just making it a habit of like just going into your body and just like, experiencing what's there. You know, I'll, I'll usually focus on emotions, by the way, uh, or feelings, not thoughts directly. If you focus on thoughts, like, you're just gonna activate your fucking mind, it'll think, it, it's just like, your mind just connects the dots, and it's repetitive, so you think of, if you think of something like you wanna let go of, it's like, oh, I wanna let go of this. But then if you think of the thought, it's like a million other thoughts are gonna pop up. So I prefer to focus on different feelings, because um, once you kinda let go of a certain emotion, let's just say, or feeling, all the thoughts associated to that emotion will like disappear as well, you know? So I'll focus on what's going on, usually like stomach, chest area, whatever the fuck's going on, like be aware of it. Um, that's step one. And this can be tough too, because we're not even used to fucking feeling. Especially as guys, we're like, fuck no, don't feel, you're fucking pussy if you feel shit. <laughs> okay, so it's like actually going into your body, as I said before, it's like, how do you feel? objectively, if someone was experiencing it, like right now, what do you feel? Is there like a knot in your stomach? Like what the fuck's going on? Tuning into that, not judging it, okay? Or if you're going into your subconscious, like for example, replaying a certain experience that was like traumatic, and usually like, again, you'll fucking cry, you'll, you'll feel like horrible, like it's replaying that, um, and then really focusing on that feeling. Like if there's something buried in there, it's like replay that scenario and let yourself experience that scenario fucking fully. It's like you're there, it's like you're going through that shit. And it's really painful. It's not a, necessarily a fun process, by the way. Um, so you'll go through it, and then it's about not judging it, not labeling it, not viewing it as bad. And the only way to do that is to turn off your mind, like to quiet your mind. Like you have to let go of your mind, and you can't use your mind to be, let go. And uh, then it's pretty much just like through breath, just like breathing it, like breathing into it, opening up to it, not resisting it, because that's what we're taught as well. Like anything painful, it's like resist it. But here it's like opening up to the pain or softening to the pain, let's just say. And then just kind of letting it run its course. And you'll realize like just by kind of breathing and like letting yourself experience it, you can visualize it come up, come out. 
uh, you'll let go of it. And it's as easy as that. It's just, again, we're not used to doing it. We're used to doing like three things, like um, David Hawkins talks about this. It's either suppressing it, like stuffing it down or repressing it, uh, expressing it, where you have you know, those little outbursts of your pain body attack, and uh, number three is escaping it. And that's our biggest one. If you can just nuke the habit of escaping, you'll be like 80% closer to letting go. But that's the hardest thing to nuke. Because um, again, once those emotions take over, it's tough, man. Like, um, I mean, we all know it, but it's extremely hard to do. Like, you break up with a fucking girl, like you're fucking heartbroken, it's so easy to just jump for that drink. Something doesn't go your way, so easy to jump for that fucking drink. That's what most people do. Um, you feel fucking even just bored. Like, this is, by the way, the number one reason guys get hooked on just porn and masturbation. Is you're just fucking bored. You hate it. It's like, how can I escape this? Come. Literally, that's like, eat, come. And now here's the interesting thing, by the way, with the whole no fap, this is my take. Uh, we all, like most people do it, like they become addicted to porn again, because it is a form of escapism. Yet the way they deal with it is no fap. So what do they do? They suppress it. They suppress the escapism and they suppress the natural urge. And that's the, the difference. It's like, there is still a natural urge where, fuck man, every once in a while you want to come. You know, but then we amplify it because we add the escapism over it. But instead of releasing that escapism to the point where you're only left with the natural urge, we just suppress it all. <laughs> That's the no fap. It's like, just never masturbate. But then you're also suppressing the natural urge. So the key is like, oh, the escapism to the point where you're just left with whenever you naturally feel like it. And it's not escapism. Okay. Um, but it's kind of like, just start noticing that. Like anytime you try to escape it. Uh, and it could be little things. Like, say you get rejected tonight, you're probably gonna, you probably will be like, you'll get rejected, be like, ha ha, yeah, yeah. Like, try to be cool, try to escape it. Try to like change the topic. It's like, no, if you feel like fucking triggered by a rejection, sit into that. Be like, okay, what the fuck am I feeling? You know, when was maybe the last time I felt like this? When was the first time I felt like this? And that's an interesting thing too with your subconscious is the more awareness you bring to it, at first you'll just have like little bursts of what was stuffed there and uh, it's like over time that you slowly kind of allow yourself to let more out. So you may not even remember like the first time obviously you experienced it, but the more you just bring your attention there, you'll remember more and more and more and more. Like for me that identified with the bad guy shit comes from like childhood like movies and shit, but it actually weirdly took a while to realize this. I'm like, I don't know why I have this habit. And I was like, oh, maybe because of this, maybe this, maybe this, and like just kept bringing my awareness. Um, so that's really the process. I'll do it for like little things like that I'm just like, upset about, um, any kind of uh, like desire that's rooted in, uh, in lack and completion, that's something you've got to let go of. And this is another interesting one is, for example, you want a girl, you think if you got a girl, you'd be happier than now. If that's the case, you're doing it from, I'm down here, I need her to complete me. And this here will never work, um, you know, because on one hand you get her, it's like that, that lack will still be there, so you'll chase more. And most likely, you're going to self-sabotage getting her. Why? Because you become hooked on that emotion. And this is why it's also hard. It's like we become hooked on our default that is assuming that we're unhappy because we've been doing it for so long. Like, if you're someone who's just negative all the time, you become hooked on being negative. Do you want to be positive? Like, you probably all have that. Friends who are extremely negative. Do they want to be positive? No, you could give them the best news, they resort back to negativity. Someone who's positive, you give them something negative, they'll resort to positivity. Someone who's hooked on my default's unhappiness, I don't feel complete, I don't feel like I'm enough, he's hooked on that. Think ego equals effort. Ego equals effort. Again, not black and white, don't be like, fuck, but like being, like reaching this state of happiness is no effort. Again, this is your default. It's like, it's a weird effort. It's like that effort of letting go. It's again, you're hanging on the cliff. It's like that, it's that type of feeling. You know, it's like say, you probably experience it when you break loose. You think like breaking loose, like once you're like, oh, like, do it, like having a blast requires effort. But if you actually break loose, it's effortless. Any other questions? Yeah. First of all, thank you for this very insightful speech. I really like it. Thanks, man. Thank Steps are, are very clear to me, but did you try any body works, like for example, bioenergetics? No, but there are probably a fuck ton of ways. Like, this is just like what's worked for me, and again, it's like a combination of a bunch of things. Uh, but I know there are a lot of ways. Like, the main thing you should all get out of it is just what happiness is and the journey there. 
once you know what the journey there is, whatever fucking method you can use to get there, um, the better. And, and there are fucking many, you know, but it's like happiness is your default state. However, you've forgotten that. And it's not about seeking more, it's about realizing that. It's not about adding, it's about getting there. It's like the way there, the way you grow is by realizing you're already there and getting rid of everything telling you you're not there. That's the journey. If you get that and you let go of trying to feel happy, because you don't want to feel happy, you want to be happy. Not the emotion, but the state. Fuck the emotion. You do not want that emotion, because as I said, that emotion is not true happiness. That emotion is dependent on something and it's linked to feeling happy, feeling not happy. What, I mean, what makes you feel happy eventually will turn into unhappiness. You don't want to feel happy. You want to let go of shit that makes you feel happy because that's the shit you're attached to. You want to let go of anything you want. You want to let go of anything you don't want. Let go of all the emotions, let go of all the thoughts, reach the state. And again, you can't put this state into words, but that's what we're looking for. Because you've all had the emotion of feeling happy. It's, it clearly is not what you're after. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you talk about how your subconscious might actually like uh, stop you from losing weight or your goals. Is there any thoughts you had like when you were losing weight that stopped you or? Oh yeah. The, way? the self concept that I bought into was not someone who's in shape and not someone who's healthy. And although consciously it's what I wanted, it would go against that ideal destructive artist identity that I was unconsciously, you know, bought into and fueling. Because they went against it. It's like, that's what motivated me, like, that destructive artist type thing, kind of like the, the thing where everything pops at the end, that's what motivated me to get the, to where I'm at in life. I don't want, like, subconsciously, that's what's driving me. Consciously, I'm like, let's get healthy now. Done. You know, the same in terms of what you deserve, by the way. That's the shit we shove into our uh, subconscious as well. If you're someone who thinks you don't deserve happiness, which is again, your defaults and happy, it doesn't matter what you do, your subconscious is gonna keep taking over, you're unhappy. If you're someone who thinks you don't deserve hot girls, you know, just making that firm commitment like enough's enough. Because we're so hooked on doing, like in, our mind's like repetitive as fuck. Uh, most of the thoughts you're thinking today are the same thoughts you thought yesterday and the day before and the day before and the day before. Like same, even when you go out, it's like you have the same thoughts when you're out in the field, the same anxiety, the same emotions. It's like we're, li we're living our life on fucking repeat, literally. And the more we do it, the more we're hooked on it and the stronger that sh those habits become. So for me, it's like funny enough like that. That's why, by the way, uh, like a life crisis will usually make a huge shift in someone's life because it's it forces you to kind of confront all that shit you've been running away from. Like you can't rationalize it anymore. And I was at that point where I'm like, I didn't have a choice but to let go. And it forced me to be like, enough's enough. Like fuck this unhappiness, enough's enough. I'm going into the subconscious, fuck it. Dive into that memory, replay the scenario. Replay, for example, if you get pissed when a girl rejects you and like say it really hurts, Think about that rejection. Place yourself in that situation. Like imagine that girl, like let yourself feel that. Like that girl just fucking rejected you. What were you feeling in the moment? And it's like honest introspection. Don't lie, don't suppress it there. If there's resistance around feeling it, that's what I'm saying. Let go of that resistance first and then let those emotions fucking come up. Um, that's what I did. Like even going through, for example, like that media shit, there was a lot of times where like during the process, I actually suppressed a lot to kind of get through it. Like if my emotions took over, I wouldn't be able to handle it. So it was very like, shove it down, stay very logical, very like house of cardsy. Um, and then after the fact, it's like, holy shit, there's all this stuff I suppressed. So I'd have to like, replay different scenarios where at the time I'm like, stuff it in uh, and like resummon that. So I'm like, I'm there and this just happened and I just read this, for example. And at first I'm like, okay, I just read this. I, you know, it's in the past, whatever. But it's like really staying with it. Like picture myself being there, like you can do with your, I like doing with my eyes closed. Like I'm there, I just read it. What did it feel like? Do I have resistance around it? Let's try to let go of that. Where, where's like the pain, the knots just around the resistance? You get rid of that, maybe for like a fucking week, maybe for like a month of doing this, it'll only be the resistance until you get to that emotion. And you're really picturing, it's like, what do I, like that anger kicks in and it's like, you really like, I was like sitting in a fucking chair, like at home, fucking fuming, like fuming. Or, you know, if you feel like hurt, betrayed and shit, it's like, okay, replay it. And it's the stuff, because you're pressing and you don't want to bring it up. Like, I don't want to replay the fucking scandal. I'm just like, replay it, replay it, Blah, like hurt. And then once I, like, there's like a little glimpse of it, dive into that. Your subconscious will only give you a little bit at a time, if, if that. 
So it's like, just keep your awareness there. Keep it like, don't give up. And then you'll get a little piece of the puzzle. Then you get another little piece, another little piece, time and awareness. Sit down comfortably, back straight, hands on your fucking lap. Uh, close your eyes and just bring your awareness into your body. Okay, we're just gonna follow these three steps. Uh, yeah, extremely simple. Uh, what's going on, okay? And we're not gonna, again, you can apply this to what's going on in the moment. As I said, you can jump in your subconscious. If you wake up in the morning, you can think about any worries you have about the day. If you're going to bed at night, if there's anything that's like you're pissed off about or stressed out about, you can do it to that. It's like literally anything. But for now, we'll just go into, you know, what you're feeling at the moment, okay? So go into your body, stomach, chest area, and try to objectively notice what you feel, like what's going on, okay? Is there any knots, any stress? Are you maybe worried about tonight? Maybe you're worried about all the content you just heard. Maybe there's doubt. Maybe there's like this need now, like fuck, I bet, I hope I'm gonna experience something. Like just what's going on? If there's thoughts, that's fine, but try to catch the emotion behind. Like what emotion, what feeling does that thought bring up? What does it stir up? Okay, and just don't judge it, simply be aware of it. That's step one, being aware of it. Step two is you gotta quiet your mind. Because just right now, if you're still in your head, no matter what you're doing, there's a part of you that's judging it or that's logically thinking about it. So to quiet your mind, again, many techniques. Uh, the one I personally love, and that's the one uh, my energy coach taught me at the time, is uh, grounding yourself in what they call your root chakra, uh, basically the bottom of your spine. So visualize your mind, okay, whatever you're thinking, like that little voice judging the emotion, or trying to identify the emotion, somehow hanging on to it, visualize that going down your spine, literally to the bottom of your spine. Like fully grounded in your physical body, that's where you're thinking, that's where all the thoughts are. You're breathing from there, you're thinking from there, your whole head is down there, okay? And you're gonna ground yourself here, and we're gonna do this simply through breathing. Again, this is not magic. Uh, the, the breathing technique we're gonna use is a pranic breathing technique. Again, it's 6363 where we're gonna inhale for six, hold for three, exhale for six, making a, a hissing sound, like a shh sound, and uh, hold for three, okay? And we're gonna do this just, again, from the bottom of our spine, okay? So again, your nose is down there. When you inhale, I want you to literally visualize you inhaling from the bottom of your spine, okay? You're gonna ground yourself deep in your body, and again, we're inhaling for six, you're gonna hold for three, you're gonna exhale for six, and you're gonna hold for three. You can come closer. So, starting now, inhale for six, go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold for three. One, two, three. Exhale for six. Shh. Two, three, four, five, six. Hold for three. Two, three. Breathe normally again, okay? Again, still breathing from the bottom of your spine. You should already feel a little bit more grounded, a little bit more in tuned, a little bit more in touch with what's going on inside, with your body, with your emotions. We're gonna do another one. Breathing again from the bottom of your spine. Inhale for six, starting now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold for three, two, three. Exhale for six. One, two, three, four, five. Six, hold for three, three, breathe normally again, okay? Again, should start feeling even more grounded, maybe a little bit lighter in your head, that voice a little bit quieter, thinking from, again, down at the bottom of your spine, less loud. We're gonna do one more breath from the bottom of your spine. Inhale for six, starting now. One, two, three, four, five, six, hold for three, Three, exhale for six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold for three. Breathe normally again. Okay, so it should already start feeling a little bit lighter in your head. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back into your stomach and chest area and just tune into that same feeling. Whatever was a little bit of stress, wherever there's a knot, wherever there's worry, just anything unpleasant. You're gonna tune into it, and again, your mind should be a lot quieter. Maybe not 100%, but at least a little bit more grounded. And what we're gonna do here is you're gonna allow yourself to experience it fully, and while breathing, you're gonna visualize that take over your body, 
come up, and when you exhale, I want you to visualize it leaving your mouth. So you're gonna inhale for six, but this time you let it come up literally to like the back of your throat, the top of your spine, hold it for three, and when you exhale, visualize it going out, okay? So tune into it, whatever, again, any kind of upset, any kind of stress, inhale for six, bringing it up starting now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold for three, two, three. Exhale for six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold for three, two, three. Breathe normally. Okay, so you probably let a little bit out. There's probably more. Tune into it. We're gonna do two more breaths. Okay, breathe in, starting six right now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold for three, two, three. Exhale for six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold for three, two, three. Breathe normally again. Okay, tune into any last bit of that feeling. Anything left, any upset, any stress, any knots, any worry, any anxiety. Bring it up for six starting now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold it for three, two, three. Exhale for six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold for three, two, three. Breathe normally again, okay? And again, there might be a little bit there. Don't judge it, because as soon as you're judging it, you're hanging on to it again, but everything should feel a little bit lighter, a little bit better. And what you should prove to yourself here is that that state you're chasing you don't get it out there, you get it in here. And it's about realizing it's already there. We didn't chase validation to feel better right now. We didn't chase anything external to feel better right now. We just let go of some stuff and realize that just by letting go of some stuff, we felt better. Not 100%, your thoughts are gonna take over now, you'll be back to your regular self, but you've proven yourself that that's the journey there and you've experienced it a little bit more. Okay, and you can open your eyes here that's the process. It's not magic. It's just that we don't do it and we're not used to doing it. And we're not taught this shit. And most of us don't even know how to fucking breathe. Most of us are just like, <laughs> non-stop. And that's it. It's allowing yourself to go into it. And again, this is just what we're feeling right now. If you do this at home, literally any kind of upset, breathe into it. You're in the club. Like this is actually something I even do in the fucking club, standing up. Like I'm not like, <sighs> like doing like that but just like the visualizing myself like kind of grounded at the bottom of my spine, breathing from there, grounds you like a motherfucker while out. All right, so I hope you enjoyed. Apply this at home, apply it to everything. Uh, this shit changed my life. I hope it changes yours as well. And I hope you fucking crush it tonight. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.